Oh, a lot of people know that Apple's my favorite company in the world. However, a very close second has to be Tesla. Let's please just talk about this. So I was all shocked just as much as you or as many of you may have found out, but if you didn't, allow me to recap just because I'm excited and I love talking about it and it just makes you feel like 2018 and 19 are going to be very slow years. So we knew that Tesla was working on a semi truck. This was no secret. Elon Musk had tweeted about it before he had shown little sneak peek images about it. So we knew it was coming. And at this event, we got down to the hardcore facts about the semi truck and it finally showed why Elon Musk wanted to take this route. And let's be honest, how many many times do people, especially people like me, you know, like techie people or journalists get excited about the release of a semi truck? Has that ever happened? Has there ever been like an official live stream for the new unveiling of a new semi truck? Like have, have people ever been excited about this? No, not really. I can't really think of an exception to that. And what I think is so memorable about this moment is that there's so many people in the audience excited to see what Elon Musk has to show. And yet I doubt any of them in that audience are really there to buy the product he's talking about. How many people in that audience are actually interested in just buying a Tesla semi truck? But of course we all think it's cool because it's the first of its kind, an all electric, very capable, very modern and forward thinking semi truck that has autopilot features, safety features, faster than any semi truck has gone before. But again, was that something we were concerned about? Or was that something people were worried about? I'm a truck driver, but I hate that I can't get from zero to 60 in under five seconds. Don't worry guys, Tesla's got your back. I, I, I don't think that was a big demand. What this keynote is truly about and what the semi truck is really a resemblance of is that electric cars are the future. And just because they've had a reputation of being slower or having less range, it doesn't mean that that can't be improved. And it doesn't mean that we are forever tied to gasoline cars. I think that's what Elon Musk was trying to pitch to people with this event. The idea that in almost every single category, electric vehicles can be better, basically with the exception of price. So yeah, some of the really cool specs is that it could reach zero to 60 miles per hour in just five seconds, which is nowhere near what the next best gas diesel semi truck is capable of. Even with hauling a load of 80,000 pounds, it can go from zero to 60 in about 20 seconds. Whereas an 80,000 pound load on a typical semi truck could take like over a minute to get there. They also have a hard time going uphill, whereas the electric Tesla semi would have no problem. And of course, this comes with tons of autopilot features, which Elon demoed a lot of the interesting concepts like having one driver with multiple semi trucks behind that driver, all being controlled by that one guy. So instead of having to pay three separate truck drivers, each of them hauling a different load of equipment or supplies or whatnot, instead you just pay one truck driver and he controls the two behind him. And the great thing about this was of course, people who are interested in purchasing the Tesla semi are likely to be businesses. They're the people that are shipping stuff, right? I don't really think it's for, you know, consumers. Not to mention that the cockpit, yes, the cockpit of this actual semi truck looks incredibly insane and it makes you feel like you're a god on the highway. You sit in the center of the truck itself and you have two monitors on either side of yourself where it can have the rear view mirrors from cameras that are rear facing and it can have all of the data, all of the radio data and all of the information that truck drivers need in their semi trucks. You kind of look like you're in Star Trek. You're like, you've got this big panel and you've got all these touch screens you can look at. And then of course, if you need extra seats, there can be two in the back. It can be configured in many different ways. The most impressive statistic that I don't think people are getting excited enough about is the range of this truck is supposedly on average around 500 miles. Elon says that could even go higher in the future, which is pretty good compared to most gas cars, especially since the Model 3, the Model S, the Model X are known for having significantly smaller ranges. And that's one of the compromises you have to deal with with an electric car is that you have to make sure that when you go home, you make sure it's charging and make sure that you don't go too far without being out of range of a charge station. Whereas Elon in this keynote tried to explain that range is only getting better on electric cars here on out, even if you're hauling 80,000 pounds of equipment. But anyway, the most impressive statistic I think is that it only takes 30 minutes to recharge a 400 mile range on these semi trucks. That was the big thing I was worried about. I was like, well, obviously if it's a big electric vehicle, it has big battery in it. It takes a long time to transfer that much power. Apparently they're working on methods on how you can transfer this much power very efficiently. And he mentioned that you're required as a truck driver to stop every six or seven hours or so to either rest, take a bathroom break. And while you're resting, of course, these things could be charging up and filling up their capacity back up to 100%. Some of the cool features I really liked was the incredibly durable glass in the windshield. One interesting part is that jackknifing is now impossible because wheels on the outside will actually move at a faster rate than the inside because they all move independently, which means that driving this thing is going to be way easier. 
and there's essentially no brake pads because the power that is collected by coasting with these wheels slows down the truck in such a way that he says you really never have to replace your brake pads, which is a big expense for most truck drivers. Yet the very ambitious goal of saying that all Tesla semi trucks have a guaranteed life of reaching a million miles. That's pretty good, considering that most of the time you really shouldn't be spending too much on a car if it has over 100,000 miles on it. Now they're talking about a semi truck, you know, something that's built for the road and being used constantly and it can go a million miles. Definitely not bad stats at all. So I think this is a big leap forward. It shows that electric cars are very capable and that in time we can optimize the batteries, we can optimize efficiency to where range is no longer a problem, charging is no longer a problem, and eventually it will just be pointless to have gas cars at all. Again, decades and decades away. We're not anywhere close to that, but I think this is kind of the first step towards that day. So that's all we were expecting from the keynote, of course, but you know what I'm getting at. I had the pleasure of watching this live, which was really, really exciting. You know, Elon says, hey, thanks everyone for coming. Thanks for Good showing way. up Thank tonight. You. The thanks. lights dim. They led you to believe it was over. And then, of course, there's that Spaceballs reference where they say they've gone plaid. And then the back of the semi truck opens up and the new 2.0 version of the Tesla Roadster rolls out. car that is. Love that red shine to it. Very confused as to where the door handles are. But this, of course, is what people are freaking out about. This is what had people excited because it was unexpected. He didn't say there was going to be a new Roadster at all. He said they would do it someday, but it was not supposed to be the day of the semi-truck. Two very different products. And then, of course, this car smashed all records. 0 to 60 in 1.9 seconds, over 250 miles per hour, range of 621 miles. Wow, that's... That's much better than most gas vehicles. And it takes under nine seconds to go a quarter mile. So yeah, this thing is basically a beast. And I'm hoping that the efficiency they were able to build into this car will eventually be implemented into the other Teslas. As of now though, I understand that when you put all your eggs in one basket, you wanna make something that just shows the future of electric vehicles and says, hey, we can be better, we will be better. You have another thing coming. I thought that was so incredibly cool. And you of course can reserve one for a pretty penny. However, there will not be available or not in production until 2020. So we still got a ways away from that. Keep in mind, it's not necessarily three years away. There's less than two months in 2017 left. So this is more like two years. And I really hope that the production process can speed up very quickly, just like it did with the Model 3. They were actually slightly ahead of schedule, unlike Apple with the HomePod, which is very sad about. Oh, and by the way, the Tesla semi truck will be available 2019. So basically a year from now. And the one confusing thing that I've looked around for for hours is I can't figure out how much these semi trucks actually cost. Cost. When you go to the pricing, and even Elon Musk said in the keynote, I bet you're wondering how much these cost. They really only want to talk about how much money you save, which is great. You know, not having to pay for gas, not having to pay for the upkeep or the problems that most semi trucks have, saying that over time this thing will start to pay for itself. You will save over $200,000 if you invest in a Tesla semi truck. But again, they don't give you kind of a full price point. I think they don't want to just because, first of all, it's not available to consumers, so really only businesses need to know how much it is. And on top of that, it's probably probably not cheap. If it was a pretty good deal, they would have told you. Reading some articles around online, I found out that the battery pack necessary for moving so much cargo and for moving such a large vehicle alone could cost $400,000. And that's just the battery, which means that the entire deal itself could be, you know, very easily up in the 800,000 range or even the million range. But again, Elon Musk is just hoping that the businesses will look at it, see it as a long-term investment and say, over time, this thing will pay off. However, we all know that not all companies are in that boat. A lot of companies are like, yeah, that's great. It's really cool, but I can't afford to slap down a million dollars on one truck. Even if it does save me money over time, some people can't afford that down payment. But either way, I'm really excited to see some of those on the road. Walmart has already come forward and said that they will be testing the Tesla semi truck to see how it works for them. Really glad that businesses are already jumping at this opportunity to say, hey, yeah, this might work. And of course, I'd be very, very curious to hear what actual truck drivers think of the Tesla semi truck. Cause I feel like everyone who's excited about it isn't actually a truck driver and likely wouldn't be buying one anyway. Either way, we're just excited that it exists. They look cool. Look at these things. There's like a silver one and a space gray one. Maybe I should get one one day so it matches my space gray ecosystem. That's right. Your Apple sheep wants a watch, iPad, iPhone, MacBook, and iMac, and semi truck that all have the same color because ecosystem. And the Tesla Roadster, while shattering all these records, only costs $250,000, even though it's a lot faster than a lot of other supercars that cost millions of dollars. 
years. However, one thing I try to remind people is that since this isn't coming out for a while, it means that the competition, whether it be other electric concept companies or other mega car companies, could likely make a concept car or make their own supercar that'll be capable of beating the Roadster in a speed test before the Roadster is actually available. So I wouldn't hold the, this is the fastest production car tagline over it at all times, because I feel like that over the next two and a half years or so, we'll likely see something pass it up. But at the same time, if something can pass it up and it can be available to the public and it can be cheaper than the Roadster's price point, then great. Competition's great for business. We would want that. But either way, this is a really cool company. Sadly, I am definitely in no financial place to be able to afford one of those. I'm sorry, you're gonna have to rely on the big million subscriber channels to afford that. I see that MKBHD has already reserved his Roadster, so congratulations. If I were to get one, it'd likely be a Model 3 because that's the closest thing I could afford. Afford, not afford, I don't. I can't afford it. The Ford's a car company. Anyway, that's enough. Hope you guys are excited as I am for the future of electric cars. I think that smartphones are gonna die out in hype. We're removing bezels, we're getting cameras better, we're getting batteries better. Eventually, all these companies are gonna have identical features and it'll just be a difference of software. And a lot of that comes down to personal preference. But what I think is the next big revolution, the next big thing to get excited about is all the changes coming in the automotive industry. And I think that Tesla is kind of the apple of the automotive industry. So thank you guys for watching this. This is your Apple Sheep here, and I will see you in the next one.